Creeks and the next day found a lovely theropod mm -hmm. fleshing guys are footprint about that long. It's a matter of knowing what to look for. Um, then they uh, eventually could end up in the business center? I wouldn't know this. You wouldn't know this. As an agency, do what we need to do to confirm the core element. You get cars like this, and I want to send you this material on the substation. You know, I'm not sure we found this part of Maryland. So we left it there. But later in the week, I found another one. I said, wait a minute. Wake up, wake up. In the next day, I think you wanted to blow it off and put it into that stone. We have to rely on I don't know what to do. And also tell me, I obviously we'll want to put something okay. on it, but not put weight on it. So right. Let's see what this looks like for a second. And we are going to crank this up just a tad. Yeah. Here all the way along, I would have jacketed this like I would a whale skull. If this is a whale skull, that's typically what I do. Can't say it because we have to cut down through here, and it's extremely hard. Right. Uh, this the sandstone. It's just brutishly hard. So. Oh. Again, the reason for this is that we want to ensure that we have a separator between the plaster that we're applying and the actual hematite layer. So I'm going to lay this down along here, Let me drape it over the side, and this makes the next step a lot easier. down further. I want to make sure that
Okay, I'm holding my hand like this because what I want to show here is this very distinctive five-toed mantle track. One, two, three, four, five. Just in that configuration. What's special about this track is that it is um, the largest mammal track on this surface and indeed it's the largest mammal track known from the age of dinosaurs. During the age of dinosaurs, we've traditionally re uh, regarded most mammals as the size of uh, rodents, rats and squirrels and so forth. It's very rare to find anything, anything that this big. I mean, this was an uh, animal that was maybe the size of a badger or something like that. This was a big animal by mammal standards from the age of dinosaurs. Okay. Well, this is a particularly interesting track. Uh, it's got five toes, very much the shape of my hand here, but this is the largest uh, footprint that um, we've ever found and attributed to a mammal from the, from the age of dinosaurs, and it really is a remarkable uh, discovery. It's the, it's, the, uh, it's the largest mammal footprint on this lab and the largest we know of from the... Uh, so we have five uh, fingers and five toes, and so these are our Cretaceous ancestors, you might say. For a comparison, you could look at this track, which uh, has three toes, and that is just typical of a modern bird or the ancestor of a modern bird, which was a small theropod dinosaur, which uh, would have made a track like this. You can actually see one, two, three, four, five toes. And that's the front footprint of a sauropod or a, or a brontosaur. Okay, I'm holding my hand like this because what I want to show here is this very distinctive five-toed mammal track. One, two, three, four, five. Just in that configuration. What's special about this track is that it is um, the largest mammal track on this surface and indeed it's the largest mammal track known from the age of dinosaurs. During the age of dinosaurs, we've traditionally re uh, regarded most mammals as the size of uh, rodents, rats and squirrels and so forth. It's very rare to find anything, anything that this big. I mean, this was an animal that was maybe the size of a badger or something like that. This was a big animal by mammal standards from the age of dinosaurs. If you look at this uh, track here, you can see all five digits and um, or 
all five toes, if you like, and you can see a rim around the front of it where the footprint pushed forward. You can see the same thing here. So um, these are really typical mammal tracks. As far as size goes, they're um, raccoon size, I would say. We didn't have raccoons, as far as we know, in the Cretaceous, but um, something that, that size. So uh, for, for comparison, if you like, here's a little three-toed track like this, and um, that's typical of a, a bird or a small theropod uh, dinosaur. In fact, the theropod dinosaurs are the ancestors of birds. This, this is the, the first track that uh, I spotted because the rest of the slab was underground and I uh, quickly recognized that we have here a large notosaur. This is a large armored dinosaur and after we excavated the dirt in the back part of it that had infilled it, we saw first the footprint of a baby notosaur, which was kind of a, a thrill. After this was ultimately cleaned off, we found out that there appeared to be a front and back footprints uh, from the right side of the little baby that was walking along here. And to make matters more complicated, you might say, was I then noticed that there are the footprints of a, let's say, a chicken, well, the feet look about the size of a chicken feet, a little smaller, where a small flesh-eating dinosaur walked completely around this footprint. And it, it adds a little bit of mystery as to what was going on. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think all of the previous finds have just been one or two isolated tracks representing one species. And uh, here's a little one here that's sort of squirrel-sized. Uh, track, mammal track. Yeah, you can almost call that one cute. It's yeah. <laughs>
position. So this is very exciting. This could be actually key to understanding um, some of the other smaller finds that have been found in the area. So it brings everything together. Well, really what I, uh, struck me more than anything is just that such a high density of small tracks. You can just go from one area to another and say, oh, look at this, and, uh, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So it, it's quite important uh, in, in paleontology and science in general to have a good database. So we're going to be able to not measure one or two mammal tracks to compare with one or two in the rest of the world, but we're going to have a large sample and we're going to be able to say, you know, how many uh, of the small ones we have with the long toes and how many of the medium-sized ones we have with the wide toes and how many of the really large ones, larger than any we've found before. So it's just, it's really just uh, extracting, you know, paleontological data from the fossil record. It's being a good paleo detective. Really, this is the mother load of fossil footprint discoveries in Maryland. It's really put the eastern seaboard, the eastern United States on the map as far as fossil footprints are concerned. And the exciting thing is that it's new and it's kind of a, a beginning and I think it's going to lead to a lot of new publications and a lot of new understanding uh, about the ancient history of this area of uh, Maryland.